be a true you like the artist. Hi, I'm John and this is Stammer Run. Today we're going to be talking a little bit more about Puma Fast R. Is it a gimmick or not? Hi, welcome back and we're going to be looking at this Puma Fast R today. I've made an unboxing about this and a short review on this shoe already. So please feel free to take a look at that now. So let's talk about the stats on this Puma Fast R. So this is a originally a 210 pounds English pounds shoe. I picked this up for 67 pounds, which was an absolute steal. So it's a uh, the upper is a really uh, light mesh upper, really, really flexible upper. It's really light, it doesn't hold rain, it's, re it's really comfortable. There isn't really a heel counter uh, as such in the shoe, unlike something else like an Alpha Fly, for example. Uh, it's really, there, there, there is some padding around the sides of the heel. I've experienced slippage in previous Puma shoes, but not in this shoe. This is a, a 7.9 ounce shoe in a size nine, roughly about 224 grams ish. It's got a decoupled heel and a four foot area here. So there's Puma Elite foam in the front and this harder compound in the back, which I'm imagining it's probably the other foams that they use in something like a Velocity 2, for example. It's really well um, made. Uh, there's a full-length carbon plate which you can, which you can see uh, that runs through here. So you can actually see where it connects. So it's completely exposed, which was initially a concern of mine. It's a carbon composite plate, which means it's not fully carbon, and you can actually see that it looks like it's it's carbon encased in some plastic or it could be a protective case just around the exposed exposed bit there. So it's a 38 mil in the heel and 30 in the forefoot area here, um, giving it an eight mil, eight mil drop. So all in all, I think it looks like a fantastic shoe. I didn't want to take it out. I really like how this shoe looks. So from a purely um, aesthetic look and from a purely first on feet impression of this shoe really comfortable really well made really good good shoe so this talk a little bit more now that I've been in the shoe a little bit more and what do I think of the overall shoe so first thing to say about this shoe is that I was very surprised about the overall pace of a shoe. So what I mean by that is obviously you can only go as fast as, as the person in the shoe, but this really wants to, really wants to go. So a comparison, a fair comparison would probably be uh, the Vaporfly 2, for example. Now the reason why I use that is because for me, Many people will love and adore that shoe, and correctly so, you know, it is a fast shoe. In the right hands or feet, it really, really is. Now, the feeling of this shoe is similar in terms of all it wants to do is really, really go. But however, I think the, the foam in the forefoot here is softer, and it's not as punishing, I don't feel, on my feet as of Vaporfly 2. So even though it's a similar feel, I actually do prefer the feel of this shoe underfoot. Now, the whole purpose, I guess, of this shoe or the whole ethos is to, is to bring something else to the table. Now, does it, to a, to a point yes, and to a point no. So the decoupled heel and the forefoot do I feel a transition? Do I feel that it adds anything? My answer to that would be 
I don't, I don't know because it's a very similar shoe to the Night Tempo Next Descent. And what I mean by that is the fact that that had lots of different tech in the shoe to do all different things. Now I didn't get on with that shoe. That shoe rubbed me. It sounded really, really heavy. It flapped everywhere. It's just a very noisy, I felt uncomfortable shoe. This feels like a this feels like that shoe, but refined. I really like the feeling of being able to push you up onto your toe. So I'm a midfoot to forefoot, and that's where I kind of predominantly live in all of my shoes. And this shoe is geared towards me. I think this shoe is definitely geared towards somebody like me who can turn over their feet quite quickly. So uh, the cadence that I have is roughly about 195 to 210. So it really suits the transition, the faster turnover um, of legs. Doesn't mean I'm overly fast, but I'm able to turn over the legs fast. And I really like the ability to transition. And I like this, this heel for me doesn't irritate me at all. And it feels like it just wants to spring off. So when I hit the forefoot, sometimes I will hit this, but it actually feels like it's trying to get you onto your toes. And then when you're in the forefoot, um, it really, I really feels like it, I really feel like it supports, it, it supports me and I'm able to, to basically run faster. The downside to that is because I'm not an athlete um, necessarily, I think that you need ankles of steel, which I don't, which I don't really have, to be able to stay in the forefoot area for a long, long time without without sitting back in heel, particularly towards say the end of um, a marathon where you're tired and you know for everyday people who run it's really hard not to then sort of maybe go to forefoot to the heel because you're tired and in that instance that's where i feel that this shoe won't suit everybody um even me to a degree because then i tend to sit back in the heel and this heel was not conducive to a soft ride particularly not for 26 miles um so just bear that in mind. Other than that, I feel that in the right hand, I, I would definitely do a half in this. So the marathon, what I do, I would, I would attempt it in this shoe. I just wonder when I'm tired towards the end and I go back towards the hill, would I be comfortable or would it just become a right pain for the last couple of miles? So. I need to give that um, a test out. So what are the downsides to the shoe? So the downs, the major point to me in the shoe is this is a, again, it's a specific shoe made for a particular type of person. And that's my problem with super shoes per se is, so if you think about it, in all the blurb, it's their gear, you know, they've, they've had athletes in and they've produced this super, super shoe and you know, you're able to run a faster pace. Now they may have used a couple of um, people to produce the shoe and you know, they've looked at how they run. Now, the problem with that is that they're athletes and they've trained for many, many years and we haven't. So they're bringing a super shoe designed for a for an athlete who runs differently to an everyday person. And that's where the issue lies, I believe, is that they're producing these elite shoes with these elite athletes, but then bring them to the mass market for everyday people who don't run in the same way. So some people, are able to get on with the shoes but the majority of everyday people who enjoy a run are not going to run in the same way and 
I do admire what they're trying to do, but I do feel a little bit like with this shoe, Puma are trying to be different. And they thought to just how can we produce this shoe that's not like a um, Adidas, Adidas Era Pro, a Vaporfly, an Alpha Fly, the Mizuno Rebellion Pro. How can we create our own shoe? And I do feel a little bit like that's what they've done here. I do will caveat that with I do think with Puma shoes, they do try to innovate as much as they can. I've, I've really enjoyed their shoes and I think that they've they produce some really, really good shoes. I think in this instance, I think that they have tried to do that 100%, but I also think there's a an element in there where they try to be different for different sake. I do feel like they could have, I just don't know why they've decoupled. I know why they've decoupled it, but I just, I just don't feel like they needed to do that. I know to reduce weight, but I just don't feel like they needed to, to have a separate heel and forefoot. I just don't feel that there's a purpose for that. I think as much cushion, as much support, particularly because if this is um, a marathon shoe, you need all that support. And if this is aimed at an athlete, fine, you know, they can put on a pair of plimp soles and they'd be able to run for years because they're trained and that's what they do. But for everyday people, as much support and as much foam and as light as possible is the name of the game, I believe. So I think that they could have put a little bit more foam in the forefoot, just connected it with this elite foam here. And I think they'd be onto an absolute winner. Make this heel just a little bit less firm. And other than that, which is a pretty big, pretty big caveat, this is a, a great shoe. So for me, it works for me. It absolutely works for me. So I scored it a nine out of 10 because Fortunately for how I run, the the speed that I do, the way that I strike my foot, this shoe is absolutely perfect. And I enjoy the shoe. I look forward to being in the shoe. It's a really nice place to be. I actually really love this shoe. It's a really good, good shoe for me. So, so the takeaway from the shoe is I think that this is a for most people, I think that this would end up being a speed shoe. I think if you love the shoe like I do, I think you'll absolutely get on with it. You'll absolutely love the shoe. You'll enjoy putting your foot in the shoe. You'll enjoy taking it out. You'll enjoy it at fast paces. You'll enjoy it at slow paces. I really enjoy this at a slower pace. Not, not easy day slow, but you know, I think it can do that kind of everyday pace. If you want to take it up a notch, it can it can respond. So definitely for me, this is absolutely perfect. I love the upper. I think it aesthetically, I think it looks nice. That's not important to me, but it is important to some people. And I just think it's an overall brilliant shoe. Uh, other than the the coupled heel and forefoot, which I don't think it needs. I don't think it adds anything to the shoe. I don't think it feels different to anything else. As I say, I think that the three, I, I will say that the three shoes that I've worn, but I think, wow, this is a different experience, is the Vaporfly number one. I think that was unlike anything else. Then the Alpha Fly. I genuinely feel that that was just something different to this day I just feel like that was an absolute just change the game shoe I'm not a Nike fanboy per se but when they hit it they hit it good the Alpha Fly was just amazing and the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro that shoe is it's not perfect it is just a different place to be and when I think about it I smile because I really like to be in that shoe it's not it's not the fastest shoe done a half in it but it is but it is a good shoe and this doesn't I don't think this necessarily brings anything 
different to the feeling of a shoe, but it's definitely, you know, I, I'd, I'd say it's probably around number four um, or five on that list of it. Doesn't it does feel different to other super shoes? It does feel different, but not a game changer of a oh, shoe. Matt. I don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. It really, really helps us out to, or helps me out to really produce content uh, to know that you enjoy the content so I can able to, to, to test tons and tons of stuff. Tell me what shoes you like to test next and I'll try to get them and do some stuff. So thank you and I'll see you in the next one.